Thomas was for all intents and purposes a simple man. From Monday to Saturday he would enter his job at 9am, leave at 5pm and then go home to his lonely apartment. He would do this without any problem for every day of the week except for Sunday. Sunday was his special day. Just like God, Thomas rested on the seventh day. Even though Sunday was his day off, Thomas had a very strict routine for this day. Being a good Christian, he would enjoy this occasion to go to the church in the morning. Then he would ride his bike across town to his favorite bar and get massively drunk. It was his own personal way of getting closer to God, and boy did the Almighty appear from time to time. On a Sunday morning, just like any other, Thomas made his way to the church by foot. He normally sat at the front, but this time the church was full, so he had to sit at the back, to his discontent. Sitting at the back, he had the opportunity to check on the people who were at the church. The Johnson family was missing. Again. The sermon was almost over when Thomas, almost to his disbelief, spotted on his left side, a couple feet away from him, a black family. Who the fuck let them in? He thought to himself while making some grudgy sounds. Shh, said the old lady next to him. Fuck you, he said mentally to her. On his way back home, it started raining, which meant he couldn't take a bike ride to the bar and instead had to go by car. When he got to the parking spot near his home, he noticed he had a flat tire. That's no problem, he thought. I'll just use the one that I have in the... Just to immediately remember that his alternate tire had been stolen by a bunch of 12-year-old kids just last week. Even though it was raining like it was doomsday, Thomas decided to take his bike to the bar. What was once a 30-minute easy ride transformed into an hour long of a hard, long and wet journey because of the weather, the traffic and the damn nerve-wracking succession of red lights. He arrived at the scene soaking wet, tied his bike to a light pole and walked for a minute or two until he reached the bar. At the entrance, there was a sign he had never seen before. It appeared that from now on, Sunday night was gay night. Thomas had never seen such bullshit before. His special place, his sanctuary, his Shangri-La, corrupted by those depraved beings. How dirty and decadent this world was. I will not give up my bar to some queers, he said while furiously marching into the bar. Immediately he was received with various looks and smiles and even some wavings. He ignored everything and everyone and sat on one of the corners of the bar at a single table, trying to stay away from everyone. Frustrated by today's events, Thomas drank much more than usual. Beer followed by vodka, vodka followed by whiskey, and whiskey followed by more beer. The bartender never refused him any drinks, because you know, Thomas was a usual customer and the money was cool. At 2.50 am, the bartender announces he will be serving the last round and the bar will be closing very soon. Thomas, already completely drunk, orders one more beer, because, and this is a very well kept secret, if you are super drunk and drink even more, you'll get drunker to another level. It's a genius idea. With his mind not quite in this reality, Thomas stumbles out of the bar and into the street. Normally, he would walk for an hour or so to sober up before picking his bike to go home. But this time, he was so drunk that he completely lost touch of where he was or even who he was. One last beer can never hurt anyone, can it? In the very same street, sitting in a car, a group of four gay males who are already checking him out at the bar notice his situation, drive up close to him, while one of them opens up his window to speak to Thomas. Hey babe, take a walk on the wild side, he says. Thomas is practically pulled into the car at the same time that he completely blacks out. The next morning, Thomas wakes up feeling terrible. Headaches, sore throat, stomach twisting and the vague notion that something is not quite right. That's when he notices that he's not at his home and lying next to him in bed is another person with his back turned to him. 
where Thomas could see a tattoo that said, Drag Queen. Immediately, he rolls over to the other side of the bed and starts puking out of disgust. This is followed by a few moments of silence while he tries to get a glimpse of what happened last night. Then, he starts violently crying. Not because of the events of last night, but because it came to his mind a childhood memory of when he was only 6 years old and tried to kiss a boy from his class, only to get rejected and spanked by that very same boy and his older brother. 